Thank you for joining the MBRA webinar this afternoon. And the topic today is process to profit. So we're, we're painfully aware that cash flow has been hit by COVID and the reduction in volume. So today we're going to look at a few initiatives that could boost the cash flow and have a direct hit on the bottom line. So today we're joined by Pete Eden. He's one of our technical managers within the technical team of MBRA. And Pete's going to take us through some of the initiatives and I'll be asking poignant questions as we go through. So without further ado, Pete, would you like to take us through the slide pack? Okay, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining. So the first, uh, almost an agenda there, some areas that we can lead your team costs and look at the possibility of furloughing some of your staff. Look at who's doing what, how they're doing it, no times are different. It's time that we, we really looked at our business. None of us have been in this pandemic situation before, so it's all new to all of us. We're all in the same boat, repairers, insurers alike. I know the insurers are making plenty of money at the moment, but it's, it, it's, it's worth just looking at what you do and your team do. Um, so the first team that, that I'm going to look at is the estimating team. Now, that team could be anything from a one-man team to three. Um, or even more. So if you don't have the estimates for them to do, then why don't you consider th furloughing them? And then I've spoken to a few people that have said, well, yes, we've already done that. And, and others, well, I don't know whether they'd like it or not. Well, talk to them. That's the, that's the upshot of it all. Um, do you do mobile estimates and do you need to? If you're in a contract that says you must do, then, then fine. But if you're only doing a few estimates a day and you've got three estimators on site and one's a mobile estimator, I would suggest that probably you can get by with, with, with two, if not one estimator, depending on how many you're doing. Another area to look at is your, is your paints team and, and look at the paint team. Are they running efficiently? Have you got painters that are stood around doing not a lot because there's not a lot coming through? There's only so many hours they can spend cleaning their guns and sweeping the oven out. So again, that's another area to focus on and look at and ask the question of yourself, because you're paying them, could I possibly furlough them? Does every job that, go, that I get in go through the oven and does it need to go through the oven? Are there some, some repairs, for instance, if a car comes in with just a scuffed bumper, have you ever thought there's only two bolts and a few sliders that hold the bumper on? to take the bumper off. If it's a silver car, and many of them are, to just whip that bumper off and put it in with the side that you're painting on another silver car. That way you'll put two cars through one oven in one bake and therefore save money or probably in this case, make money. It's, it's, a, it's a process that, that lots have adapted anyway over the years, but I just think it's worth looking at for some of those smaller jobs that, that I certainly see go in and I'll often see a wing mirror cover or a, uh, maybe a cover off of a wheel or something small like that or a wing go in, but um, it's just worth looking at every single job that goes through. Have a look at your parts team. Again, that's another, another whole, whole, we could spend a, a day talking about that. If your parts team are ordering parts in and you've got a fairly big job that's got maybe 4,000 pounds worth of parts, it's worth talking to your parts supplier and saying to them, I'm ordering all these 4,000 pounds worth of parts. Once they're all in stock, bring them to the garage and I'll pay for them. Because what happens at the moment is they'll send 2,000 pounds down and then the clock starts ticking. And then they'll send another 1,000 pounds down and it starts ticking. And then the last 1,000 pounds worth of parts for that particular job that you need, you know what I'm going to tell you now, they're on back order. And that's where the whole thing starts to, to go awry. You don't even want to get that car in your workshop until you have all the parts to start it and finish it. There's no point starting a job unless you can invoice it. And I very quickly um, talk to repairers. It's a bit like Tesco's or any other supermarket at Christmas. They don't make any money until your card says approved. You can walk around the store all day. That's when they make their money. And that's what I would advise you guys to do out there. Accept all the parts once they're all in stock. Another area to look at is your customer facing team. Now, that very often is the estimating team. 
And if you've got three estimators, maybe you've got a receptionist and a, and a reception junior. Do you really need all those people in reception whilst we haven't got an awful lot of work coming in? We, we know that we're down probably 65 percent ish of our work that we would normally be having. And at this moment in time, we've got furlough that there is there from the government. I think we should be making good use of it. Um, so it's worth looking at how many people you actually need on the, uh, the front of the business. Have you spoken to your staff about doing simple things like leaving the lights on and leaving the doors and the windows open? I was in a shop the other day and the, the heater was belting heat out, it's probably too hot in the workshop. They had to have it cranked up flat out because they had the doors open. And when I asked the question why the doors open, and they said, well, Pete, if we shut the doors, customers think we're closed. So I said, well, just get an A board and write on it that you're open. It's a simple thing to do, but if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get the same results. And I think what we're trying to say in this webinar today, Tom, is just look at your business and think about it. Think about what you're doing today and do you need to keep doing what you did a year, 18 months ago? And you probably all know that the answer to that is no, you need to change things. And lastly, on costs, have you looked at the small business grant fund from the government? It's not a cost at all. It is if your name's Boris Johnson. Um, that is a is a fund that will fund anything from £2,000 up to £2 million, depending on the size of, of your business. So again, it's a handout from the government. The government have put this in place for businesses. And bear in mind that, that furlough and funds like this small business grant fund are there to help business through these tough times that we find ourselves in today for all businesses, whether you are parcel deliveries or farmers, whatever business you're in, it, this, this furlough scheme and the small business grant fund covers that. Yeah. I can't think of a more, a more important time for us to explore and look at this because we are at the time where we've got less cars on the road, so less claims. Yes, that's growing a bit at the moment. However, we're coming into the summer, which is generally a, a quieter time for you guys anyway. And the furlough scheme is only going to last until this September. So it's kind of worth um, making hay while the sun shines, really. Okay. Is, is while we're on this, so we'll go on to furlough in a minute in great detail. But I think it's poignant to point out that, you know, some of the, some of the attendees on, on, on the webinar today, they, they know how to run a business. And we're yeah. trying to draw their focus back to the important bits that could make a massive impact, a positive impact to their bottom line and their cash flow, right? So, yeah. you know, while, you, while volumes are down and you've got time on your hands, start looking at what you used to do and how vigilant you probably were once when you started a business and you're all over the books, you're all over the costs. Um, you know, the, the parts team and how you order your parts, get a basket of parts in. When I was at IRG, they introduced this and had a massive impact to the flow of the workshop because vehicles came in, you knew you had a cage of parts, you knew all the parts were there, they'd been checked in and they could crack on with the car. And not only that, you're only paying for the parts when they're delivered. So you've got probably 30 days grace on that when they're delivered. It all works out. Um, and then when you talk about estimators in a team, if you've got a team of three estimators and they're bubbling along, well, potentially put one on furlough, keep two in. If they're productive, great. If they're not, then furlough. I mean, we, on our website, we've got the VVDA and we've got Andy from Crash Assessor. He does the estimates. And at the moment he's doing, I, I think he had a trial of doing estimates. So you sublet your estimates out to him and he'd do one for like 16 pounds plus that. He, he, I would trial that myself just to see what the variance is from one estimator to someone completely different estimating and seeing if the hours fluctuate is there more profit? Is it a, a training exercise for your VDAs? Because you can then mark that against a third party, in essence. Um, and then, you know, on, on the booth, do you need to crank the booth on? Have you got infrared? Could you take that bump off and infrared it? There's, there's loads of different things that you can do on saving money. And I think, you know, some people already did this, but they... they potentially need to get back to it but i think furlough is an, an important message today um and we'll we'll lead on to that in a minute but yeah i think tom one one thing that i set out when i wrote this presentation was really not to try and ruffle any feathers but just to to, to 
make us all think about what we're doing and and just question what we're doing. If we're doing it all right, then great. Um, we tend to be an industry in denial sometimes where we we think we're doing it right and, and we're not. And, and I think that's just a case of, it's not me. I don't want loads of people coming back to me saying, oh yeah, but it's this and it's that and it's the other. That's not what this is designed to do. This webinar is designed to try and help them through the furlough, as you say, which which is fairly simple, but on the face of it could be complicated. Um, and just enable people to think about their businesses, how they're, how they're running them today. Most of our repairers are fantastic and run a really tight ship and are really good. And if Tom, if a repairer took one little golden nugget away from this today, I would consider my job as being well done because that's what it's designed to do. Which brings us on quite nicely to the, uh, the furlough. I'm, I'm not going to read that top um, paragraph out. You can read it while I'm waffling on if you like. But but basically the new scheme is called flexible furlough. And, and that paragraph is a sums it up pretty well from a, a company called Goodman, somebody over there I can't see because Tom's over the top of him. But, um, Tom Derek. That yeah. Well they're a they were um, health and safety and accountancy was their specialism. They're no specialist in furlough. So like Tom said on our on our website, and there's also uh, a link there for the government furlough uh, page, which will help you through. Again, I'm not going to read this out. This is something that I put up for you guys to look at when we've gone. It, it, there are so many numbers on there, so many things to talk about. But basically, what it does is it's showing you that from, from May, which we're pretty much in, the government will pay 80% of the salary. June, they'll pay 80% of the salary. In July, it drops to 70. And then August and September, it drops down to 60. When I think it will finish. Boris could extend it after September, but I think we all know that we're starting to come out a little bit now. So I don't think we can afford to do it too much longer than September because it's costing the country a fortune. But um, that's there for your- um, But on that piece, it's important to know that, you know, even though that contribution from the government steps down, the employer's contribution steps up. So yeah. at no point will the employee's wage drop below 80%. No. In fact, some employees pay up to 100% um, yeah. to aid engagement. So, you know, even through to September, the employee, if you furlough them, they're entitled to 80% of their wages. So in July, the employer would have to put in their pocket 10% and then 20% in August and 20% in September. As of the 1st of October, furlough stops. That's why it's pinnacle to, you know, absolutely important for you to understand furlough. If you can use it as a mechanism to save salary costs, then I would do it now because you're in limited time space to be able to utilize that. And that's yeah. what it's there for. The government wants to support people that aren't busy. Yeah. And it could be as a result of COVID. And mainly it is because people aren't traveling as much. And it's had a direct impact on our business. So we're, we're, we're sort of egging the repairers on to utilize this service. So if you've got a painter that comes in on a Monday and there's no work for him, then really you should be loading your workshop knowing there's no work on a Monday and telling him on Friday or Saturday he's not needed on the Monday, he's going to be furloughed. Is that pretty much your point, Pete? Yep, that's exactly the point. Lots of people complain it was so complicated and businesses were going out of business because they, they didn't understand it, so they carried on paying and, and then the bank foreclosed on their loan. So the government drafted up a new one and it, and it works. If, if I can understand it, anybody can. There you go. So two other important things to watch out for that are not really directly furlough um, related. Many people start jobs that they don't get parts for because we haven't got that much work coming in. So anything that does come in, everybody has to jump on it, strip it right down and, and then realise that you haven't got the parts. You're better off if you haven't got all the parts in stock to have nobody and almost just have a skeleton staff, somebody just seeing customers should anybody come in. And I've been people stood around waiting for parts to turn up. Um, and it really does sound a bit dramatic, but that's how it really wants to be. If you haven't got the parts to start a job, don't start it. 
because if you if you can't finish it at the other end we all know that we wait if we're lucky 30 days to be paid and even after 30 days sometimes we have to chase that debt so it doesn't actually stop at the end of the job when you've when you've invoiced it so there's no point stripping the job down getting it taking all the bits out of it doors off it etc for it to fill up with dust some people paint cars because they're waiting for parts just to bolt on them those cars if they are painted stood around a plastic sheet's not going to stop somebody scratching it as they walk by and you'll have to paint it at your cost so if you don't have all the parts for that car don't start it and, I, and i'd say that to you whether we had um whether we were in a pandemic situation or not tom that's just a, a good practice yeah. for everybody to and also tell your suppliers as you've alluded to that you won't accept all the parts until the order's complete if you've got a, a, an order and I, I very often see big orders of six thousand pounds upwards and i'm sure a lot of you guys sat listening to me now have saying well i've had jobs bigger than that you know where you'll end up paying for half of it because it's come in you can't invoice the job because the other half hasn't come in so tell your supplier sit on the parts here's the order for this particular car when all 10 parts are in bring them down and i'll pay for it and that's when the clock starts ticking and if you if you're on a cash only with them then you just pay them when it comes in but at least you then can do the job finish the job and invoice it that that's what i'm the message i'm trying to get across really on that one yeah i mean on on that parts though pete i think the other crucial bit is if you have got a you got your order in parts and you if you're using a estimating platform such as Auditex, then don't take it for granted that what the estimated parts price is is what you should be invoicing yeah. because they're not always accurate so if you buy a bumper for 199 pounds and that's what you're going to invoice it out at check the invoice because the invoice from the dealer is probably could be a 216 pounds in which case you've just lost 17 pounds on that job and it goes it hits yeah. your bottom line straight away and the other thing on the parts is if you are using an estimating platform such as that if you're not penny perfect then it will bounce back into a pending folder within outertex and it needs attention if you ignore them that's cash flow sat doing nothing until you actually tune it get it right and then send it off again so, you know, there's two easy things you could do today that could easily open up cash flow in your business and just be very vigilant on it. Okay, so other areas of opportunity that you could develop. So many of you have been out and, and uh, invested in ADAS and you've got your Desert A personnel that have been trained up from whoever's supplied you with that kit. Are they IIR registered? If they're not, get them on the course, get them IIR registered because A, you'll be asked by the insurance company if they're insurance industry registered. And if they're not, you'll need to do it anyway. Um, get them registered and, and use that almost as a, as a plus, as, a, as an advertiser that, that you are. Next well, one down on there, do you care about that? Yeah, not only that, Pete, if you've got staff that are IIR registered and they're certified, then you can negotiate with the engineers on their le level yeah. playing field. Um, I know one repairer uh, that is a member and he probably did four ADAS calibrations a month uh, prior to becoming IR registered. Once his staff were aware, fully aware of ADAS and the capabilities and the potential, he's now doing probably about four a day. Yeah. I mean, the return on yeah. his investment is rapid. So, you know, yeah. you may think it's a pain, but I urge you to get your staff trained um, and you, you will. Yeah. Them. Average repair costs. So that's where we've kind of come from and, and gone to. So. Yeah, no, it's very impressive. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go through every line on this. This is really just for an aid memoir for people. And I'm sure that everyone's looking at it now thinking, oh, my gross profit is higher than that. And. You know, blimey, though, that part is quite high in, in this economic climate to, to get. These are just, guys, these aren't there for arguments. These are just there as a, as a general KPI that I use when I go in and, and talk to repairers because it's they, they're good to aim for. You know, whether it be a Labour GP of 60% or your recovery rate at £31 an hour, it's, it's, those are good averages 
to work at. If you looked at the Labour GP being at 60, if you looked at your recovery rate of being 31, and you looked at getting five grand per productive a month, you're not going to be that far away, I don't think. No, and, it's, um, and if you don't understand any of the terminology that's been used, then get in contact with us and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll again, support and help. It, you know, it, this is the type of figures that you need to be looking at to run a successful body shop. And the key indicators are very important, I think. Very often, Tom, you'll move one and it'll move another by virtue that you've moved one by just yeah. changing one small thing. And, it, and it's just about being as slick as you can and, 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 and just coming up with, with different ideas. It's being recorded, it's so we'll go on to the website. So, it, you know, if you talk to someone and they want to watch it, they can go on and give it 24 hours and it'll be on the website ready for people to watch on the MBRA. Pete, you're a legend. Thank you very much for your time today. And thanks for sharing Pleasure. this nice with you with Tune in, I appreciate your attendance. And until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.